OK, we're going to remind ourselves about adding and subtracting fractions. The easiest adding and subtracting of fractions we can do is when we have um, the same denominator. So like this example, where we're talking about 1 6 plus 2 6. Why is the same denominator making it so easy for the addition? Well, when we have the same denominator, what we mean is we've cut this pie up into six pieces and this pie up into six pieces. So the pieces we're talking about in these cases are exactly the same. In this case, we've got one of the pieces, and in this case, we've got two of those exact same size pieces. And so when we add them together, we've got one piece, and we add it to two pieces of the same size, we end up having three of those size pieces, three-sixths. So that e answer is very easy. And just remember, we can always simplify any answer we get, right? Golden rule of fraction, what I multiply or divide top by, I multiply or divide bottom by to get an equivalent fraction. So here I can divide the top by 3 and the bottom by 3, and I get the answer of a half. And you can see that nicely from this picture. 3 out of the 6 pieces is exactly the same as a half of the pi. And we're going to get exactly the same story if we're doing subtraction, where we've got the same denominator. So here, 5 eighths minus 3 eighths. What you've got is a pie that's been cut up into 8 pieces, another pie cut up into 8 pieces, right? What you've got are these pieces are exactly the same size as each other in both. So what you've got at the top is 5 of these pieces, and what you need to do is take away 3 of the same size pieces, what do you end up with? Well, you can see quite easily. If I start with five pieces, and then what I do is I get rid of these three pieces, I'm left with just two of those pieces. So the answer is two of those eighth size pieces. And again, I can simplify, divide top and bottom by the same thing, and I get my answer of a quarter. So if I have same denominators, it's very easy because I'm talking about the same size pieces. So it becomes a bit more interesting when I end up wanting to add two fractions which don't have the same denominator, like this, a third and a sixth, right? A third I've cut up into three pieces, the pi, so the pieces are quite big. And a sixth I've cut it up into six pieces, so the pieces are smaller. So I can't just add these together and say I've got two pieces, because this piece and this piece are totally different sizes. So... Before we can add together the pieces, we've got to make sure we're talking about the same size piece. And that's what we need to do when we have different denominators. So what we have to do is we've got to cut up these circles into something that makes the same size pieces. So if you have a look here, what I could have done, what I have done here with that third piece, right, is actually cut it up some more to make it into six pieces, so that I'm now talking about the same size pieces. And what does that mean in terms of the fraction? Well, what I've done is I found an equivalent fraction with a denominator of six. So that I end up here saying, okay, this one third is exactly the same as two sixths. So now I've got two sixths and I want to add that to 1 sixth. I'm talking about the same size pieces, so I can join them up together and see that the answer I get is equal to 3 sixths, which is a half. So we have the same story if we try and say 3 quarters minus 1 sixth. For 3 quarters, we've cut this up into 4 pieces, and for 1 sixth, we've cut this up into 6 pieces. So you can see the pieces here are totally different to the pieces here. So we can't just say, well, take their three pieces minus one piece, because they're totally different pieces. So what we actually need to do is we need to sort it out so that we create equivalent fractions. So let's have a look at it. If we take three quarters, right, and we make an equivalent fraction with 12 as the denominator, well, we've multiplied the denominator by 3, so we must multiply the numerator by 3. We can see here that that 3 quarters that we had shaded originally is exactly the same as 9 twelfths. Similarly, 1 sixth, if we multiply top and bottom by 2, is the same as 
two twelfths, right? That one sixth that we had shaded originally is the same as two twelfths. Now we're in the position where we've got exactly the same size pieces. So we've got nine of these twelfth pieces and we must take away two of those twelfth pieces. So what are we going to end up with? We're going to end up with seven twelfths. Okay, so now hopefully you've got that picture firmly in your mind. Adding and subtracting fractions, you need to have the same denominator before you can add or subtract so that you're talking about the same size pieces that you are adding or taking away. But we don't want to actually have to draw pictures every time, so let's just look at how we would create the same size pieces. Let's look at the same example. We've got a 4 and a 6 at the bottom. So we can't just do the subtract subtraction straight away because we're talking about different size pieces. How do we find what we can make equivalent fractions? Well, what, what is the denominator we need for our equivalent fractions? Well, to do this, we're going to find the lowest common multiple. And we know how to find the lowest common multiple. right? Remember how we do this? We write down we want to find the lowest common multiple of 4 and 6. Let me write down the multiples of 4. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. And I might have to carry on, but let's see if that's enough. Let me write down the multiples of 6. 6, 12, 18. Oh, hang on, I've already seen. I've come to my lowest common multiple, which is 12. So now I'm going to write each of these fractions here as a fraction over 12. So I'm going to say 3 over 4 is equal to what over 12? Now remember, what I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. So if I have multiplied the bottom by 3, I must multiply the top by 3. So I get 3 quarters is exactly the same as 9 twelfths. And again, I want to take that 1 sixth, this other fraction, and I also want to make it into an equivalent fraction with twelfths. Well, what have I done to get from 6 to 12? I've multiplied by 2, so I must multiply here before by 2, and I get 2 twelfths. So 3 quarters minus 1 sixth is exactly the same as 9 twelfths, because 3 quarters and 9 twelfths is the same thing. Subtract, and 1 sixth is exactly the same as 2 twelfths, so I get 9 twelfths minus 2 twelfths, and I get 7 twelfths. Okay, I want you to try this one now. Draw on the diagram how you can see how to do a quarter plus three-eighths and give the answer, and we'll go over it. Okay, so a quarter looks like this, right? One out of four. Three-eighths look like this, three out of eight. So now I want to add them together, different size pieces, so I can't do it. Let, if I cut this up into eighths, then I can. And so what I see is the quarter is two-eighths, so I've got one two-eighths, and then I need to add on further 3 eighths, and so I get my answer of 5 eighths. And that would be very easy to do just by numbers as well. A quarter plus 3 eighths. We need to find our lowest common denominator. So here I'm going to go multiples of 4, and then with 8, oh, well, I've already found a common multiple. So I give them both the denominator of 8. A quarter. Well, I've multiplied by 2, so I must multiply the top by 2. Uh, 3 eighths, well, I haven't changed anything, so it's just 3 eighths. And so I get my answer of 5 eighths. OK, let's have a look at what we do with a mixed number. Well, the easiest thing to do with a mixed number um, is simply to turn it into an improper fraction. So here you would say you've got um, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1. It's 7 thirds. And here you've got 1 times 4 is 4 plus 1, 5 over 4. And so now you've just in the same scenario, right? So you can find your lowest common multiple. Well, 3, it's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. With 4, it's 4, 8, 12. Great, I found a common denominator. So there you go. Make them both fractions with 12 as the denominator. So I've said 3 times 4 to get 12, so I'll say 7 times 4, which gives me 28. And then I'll say 4 times 12, I mean 4 times 3, which gives me 12. And so 5 times 3 gives me 15. And 28 and 15, 28 and 10 gives me 38, plus another 5 gives me 43. So it's 43 over 12, 
that's a good enough answer but if I wanted to I could write it as a mixed number again um, and 12 goes into 43 three times um, and that's 36 so it's remainder 12 so it's 3 and 7 twelfths okay I want you to try this one for yourselves pause the video try it and then we'll go over it Okay, so 3 times 6 is 18, um, plus 5 is 23 over 6, 1 times 15 is 15, plus 2 it's 17 over 15. Okay, let's look at our multiples. It's 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, and so on. And 15, you're going to have 15 and then 30, and there is your common. So you're going to make both of these into fractions with 30 in the denominator. So to go from 6 to 30, you multiply it by 5. So you need to multiply 23 by 5. Well, 20 times 5 is 100. 3 times 5 is 15. So this is 115. Um, and then to go from 15 to 30, you multiply it by 2. So you've got to multiply 17 by 2. So you've got 115 minus 34 and 115 minus 34 gives you 81. So you've got 81 over 30, and again, you could sort that out. 81 and um, 30 goes into 81 uh, twice, and um, that's 60, and you've got 21 over 30 remaining. And actually, 21 over 30 is something that can be simplified. Uh, because we can divide top and bottom there by 3. So let's make it in its simplest, I mean by 7, by 3, yes, by 3. So 21 divided by 3 is 7, and 30 divided by 3 is 10. So the nicest answer is 2 and 7 tenths.